This is Ram Man. I'm back with another video, another topic. Hit that cash app, dollar sign, Ram 8239. Let's go. And this topic is about gangster rap. How it was a big influence on my life. And I'm going to tell you, not a big influence of me going out, thugging, uh, getting to the streets or nothing like that. I'm just saying a big influence in my life. Let me explain. <laughs> I just take you back down memory lane. Because I grew up in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? When I really got on gangster rap was in the 90s. Of course, your NWAs. You know, people like that. Some of my favorites from the West Coast. I think West Coast probably had the most hardcore gangster rappers. I mean, because of the gang violence on the West Coast, like in L.A. and your parts of California and stuff like that. And the other parts of the West Coast, too. But, um, yeah, just gangster rap in general. It didn't make me out as a bad person to want to do something or do harm to another person. I'm just saying it was a big influence in my life. As far as like, you know, listening to it and kind of like taking out of it. I mean, the, even a negative consultation of the gangster rap, you know, like taking it in, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, you kind of like it kind of gets you pumped that hype to, you know, hey, if something jump off, hey, man, I, I take on this persona. Or this gangster rapper or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Of course, like my favorite so-called gangster rapper was Pac. I mean, even though you hear all the stories and stuff, he really went, he really didn't live that gangster life like that. But you know, he was a stand-up dude, of course. A stand-up guy. You know, if something went down, he he was gonna respond back. You know what I'm saying? Because people have a different definition of what gangsters are. You know what I'm saying? Or thugs. I know that one became very popular. I know one of my favorite uh, gangster rap groups was Bone Thugs and Harmony. When Bone came out, you heard thugs all the time. I mean, Pop was saying thugs before I heard a Bone them coming out. But when Bone them came out, you heard thugs like just 24 7. Like everybody saying they thugs and thugs was like, it was supposed to be like a gangster, you know what I'm saying? A G. A thug, a G, something like that. But you know, people put their little definitions on what a thug and They try to separate the shit. They be like, okay, thugging is this and being a gangster is this. You know what I'm saying? I look at it like the same shit. You know what I'm saying? A person that's involved in the streets and living that life. That's how I looked at it. You know what I'm saying? But it was a big influence on my life. Some, like say, some of my favorite rappers that come out the game, the rap game. Okay, Pac. When it comes to the gangster rap, I'm gonna just say that. Like, cause I don't, cause I differentiate the rap from the gangster rap. I different differentiate the hardcore gangster rap. From the just the hip hop, you know, hip hop. When I think about hip hop, I think about people like, um, you know, you like your old school like New York rappers, <laughs> you know, like your um, Rock Hems, your um, who else? A uh, Rob Bass, you know, just hip hop, just making your dance groove, you know, stuff like that. You know, when I just think about hip hop, when I think about gangster rap, I think about okay, pulling that scrap, you know, what I'm saying you got that iron. You know what I'm saying? You know, down south, gangster rap was a big ass influence on my life. Like, of course, you, you know, you you had your no limits and your cash money. You know what I'm saying? The two biggest rap labels in history from the south in the 90s, like, man, what? Man, I just think it'll never be like, I mean, of course you you know, you got your rapper lots and all that, but they was not heavy like No Limit and Cash Money was. But when it actually came to No Limit and Cash Money, especially when it came to the gangster music, I was always on the No Limit side because they stuck to that gangster ish. You know what I'm saying? They stuck to it. They, 
I mean, you had your few songs that, you know, Master P was trying to put main screen, like, you know, your main screen songs and type water it down so it can get the radio play and shit. But No Limit had the gutter gangster shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The soldier, you know, just killing shit. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, Pop was my favorite gangster rapper at that time. You know, then, like, I even do it by coast, too, because, like, I don't try to uh, compare the um, West Coast to the South. Because, you know, the different sounds and stuff like that. That's why I'd be like, my favorite is this on this coast. My favorite, like, from down South. Favorite from the East Coast. You know, shit like that. So, but it was always, okay, Tupac on the West Coast. You know, even though he was born in the East, but he moved to the West. And, you know, it was Pop first, of course. You know, Easy E was like my next one. You know what I'm saying? Easy had that gun against the rap at the time, too, when he was out. And, um, you know, your Spice Ones on the West Coast, um, who would end up, I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, NWA, I mean, MC8. <laughs> MC, I used to love some MC8, man. Yeah, girl, a gangster. Now, when it comes to the South, bring it to the South. Okay, when it comes to the gutter gangster rap, my favorite gutter gangster rapper down South is always C Murder from the No Limit Camp. You know what I'm saying? C Murder was gutter, straight gutter. <laughs> and, you know, he talked about real life issues like, you know, the Feel My Pain type music. You know, he even had a song called Feel My Pain on the Life of Death album. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he really spoke volumes of the street life. And plus, he lived that life, too. That's the thing, too, like, that really, you know, brought a lot of people attached to uh, C. Merck. You know what I'm saying? Not just because his lyricism and whatnot, but he actually lived the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? He actually, you know. He took it to his project, the Calio Project, Third Ward, and all that stuff. You know, then he had Soldier Slim. So I used to love Soldier Slim too. Uh, straight, he got a gangster. Uh, like, you know, from the No Limit Camp. You know, and uh, I mean, just the whole No Limit roster, like on the gangster gutter shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, when it came to Cash Money on the gangster gutter stuff, my favorite one was, you know, of course. Doogie, BG, you know what I'm saying? BG on the gutter gangster rap, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know when they formed that as a group and stuff, a lot of these songs, when they went mainstream, it was watered down to be commercial, you know what I'm saying? To, you know, make a hit, that's all. Um, but, you know, when that, what, Bling Bling came out on BG album, you know what I'm saying? I think it went like three or four times platinum. But, you know, it's just a song, you know, everybody can relate to. You know what I'm saying? That ain't no, really no gangster song right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the gangster music. You know what I'm saying? Gutter, raw, uncut. Then, okay, another person too, Scarface. That would probably have to be my next one down south. You know, C, Murder was number one. I used to bump C all the time. <laughs> all the time. From the No Limit camp, then other artists from No Limit too, like your Fiend, Mac, uh, uh, I mean, just a lot of the No Limit artists. They had the gun against the music, man. Right? You know, that's it. And also too, um, all right, let me get back to Scarface. Scarface had some gun against the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, never seen a man cry too. I mean, the feel my pain type music too. He was one of the best to do it too. One of my favorites. Um, down south when it comes to the gutter gangster rap. Um the gutter. Um I'm saying like gutter gutter. Man, there's a lot of different artists like um, from the South. Well, I just named two from the South. I really love. 
East Coast. Um, one of my favorite, I was just saying, the one that talked about the, the gangster shit and all that type of stuff, really. Lyrics is uh, AZ. I used to love some AZ. You know, he used to talk about the dope shit and all that, you know, a lot. You know, um, now I would have to say he was probably one of my favorites on the East Coast when it comes to the gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And who else? Okay. Midwest. Damn. Uh, Midwest. Hmm. Okay, when it comes to, all right, I, I just say when it comes to groups, me and Wes, I say Bone Thugs and Home when it comes to the gangster gutter shit. Especially they old shit. Like when you come from like creeping on the come up album, gutter. You know what I'm saying? Gutter. And you know, the East, East 19, what's that? Eternal 1999 classic, gutter album. But you know, they had the hit single Crossroads on it. And you know, they had the two versions of the Crossroads. They had the original one. The original one was tight and, uh, you know, the one they remixed it, got the radio play and stuff. Yeah, it was tight. It went mainstream and stuff, but the whole album was gutter. Gutter. You know what I'm saying? I would say in the Midwest, Bone Thugs is home. Definitely. For sure. Yeah, gangster rap was a big influence on my life. You know, I'll say not in a positive way. Like, even though they talked about the negative stuff, they still had songs that, that make you think about different consequences. If you do this crime, you know, this could, this could happen to you and, you know, you get locked up for life and, you, you know, this type of shit and you don't want that to happen. See, that was the good thing about gangster rap back then. You know what I'm saying? Every song wasn't just about, like, bang, banging and, you know, slinging an iron and shit like that. You know, some of the songs was like, um, you know, hey, I'm going to change my life and all that type of shit, you know, to feel my pain type music, you know what I'm saying? You know, those songs, to me, I think stood, stood out the most, the feel my pain type song. That's why I say pop was the best one when it came to the gangster rap, you know, um, on the West Coast, especially, because... He had the Feel My Pain type songs, you know, as being a thug and all that type of shit, which thug and gangster, I looked at like the same. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought this was an interesting topic to talk about, just freestyling on some stuff, bringing out the past. While I, I mean, I don't, like, I broaden my music vocabulary now. Like, I listen to, like, all types of music. Now, since I be coming up here to South America, too, like, I listen to of course, reggaeton, some salsa. Uh, you know, I still listen to some gangster rap and rap, you know, sometimes. R&B, still listen to. Like, I mix it all up. You know what I'm saying? I just don't stick to just one genre. It just, you know. But, yeah, this is Ram Man. Y'all have a good day. Peace out.